Greetings and welcome to News and TV. I am Makanaka Masenyama. Stories making the headlines. Thousands of homesickers left out as council allocates stands to soldiers and cops. In the courts, under fire prosecutor General Hodzi in court to clear corruption allegations. In business, government in ambitious new attempt to resuscitate Zisco still. In sports, cheaters step up preparations for Olympic qualifiers. News in detail. The Marondera municipality has torched a storm by allocating residential stands to army and police officers only, leaving thousands of waiting civilian homesickers disappointed. This came out after thousands of land applicants had besieged the tiny town's administration offices on Thursday, seeking an update on when they are going to be allocated stands they paid for back in 2015 using US dollars. Addressing the scores of homesickers, Council Housing Director Justin Chivavaya did not help matters when he told them that they have only managed to arrange stands for the police and army. In 2015, then ZANU-PF National Commissar and Local Government Minister Sevya Kasukwere at a party rally in the small town told thousands of party supporters they should each pay $2,500 to council to acquire a residential stand at Elmswood Farm in the town. Thousands of need homesickers took up the offer and paid the required amounts to council, but only a few who included soldiers and police officers have been allocated the land. Some of the residents are reported to have been ordered to pay their money through some senior ZANU-PF officials in the town. Former Finance Minister and MDC Vice President Tendai Biti has described government's decision to scrap the multi current system as a mistake. Biti was addressing a party campaign rally ahead of this weekend's by-election in Harare's Glenview South constituency. The MDC Vice President questioned why the government removed the US dollar without conditions to bring back the country's own currency. Back up visa US dollar, Muswa 24 June. 2019. Muno US dollar. Musinama conditions. A good US dollar. Musinama conditions. A good Zorera. Marienu. A Munama foreign currency reserves. Ka 350 million. Kangakari ku Washington DC. Kwa MI IMF. Kema special drawing rights. Kataka siya na baba chamisa murumende Vakaka tora dese Vakaka kwatisa We have no foreign currency reserves Zero BT added that since President Emma Somnangago took over in 2017 He has taken the country back to 1931 the main opposition has since blamed Mnangago for failure to deliver as a national leader With MDC staging demonstrations of a worsening economic hardships the trial of five Mutwaka's Republic Party activists facing public violence charges kicked off in Blawayo on Thursday with the group pleading not guilty to the charges. The five Paton Ngaba, Akim Debele, Prince Nube, Ndabazelizwe Nube and Mungameli Mlochwa were arrested at the Blawayo High Court while demonstrating during the bail hearing of Ndabazunduna Chief Felix Lathlaya Mengwindiweni last week. They are facing charges of breaching peace and security of the public. Through their lawyer, Dumisani Ndube of Matonsi, Ndube Law Chambers, the MRP activists pleaded not guilty when they appeared before Magistrate Adelaide Mbeuri. They are expected to be back in court on September 6, 2019 for continuation of trial. The Southern African People's Solidarity Network has called on President Emerson Nangagwa, who is the newly appointed Sadiq Troika chair, to call for an extraordinary summit to resolve the new wave of xenophobic attacks that have hit South Africa since Sunday this week. In a press statement, the Southern African People's Solidarity Network on Thursday said condemning violence in South Africa is not enough. The civic group wants Mnangagwa to urgently convene a regional summit as fears of a continental crisis loom with reports indicating that other foreign nationals like Nigerians have started banning South African-owned companies in Nigeria in retaliation. Mnangagwa's government, which has been quiet on xenophobic attacks in the neighboring country, 
broke its silence Wednesday, condemning violence reportedly launched by South African lynch mobs who are calling foreign nationals to leave South Africa. In the courts, Prosecutor General Kumbere Hodzo on Thursday appeared before Harare Magistrate Morgan Nemadire to answer to bribery allegations amid accusations that he unlawfully stopped the trial of a Harare man who allegedly used high-profile people's names to swindle unsuspecting clients out of various amounts of money. Hodzo on Wednesday ordered the trial of Leon Gomani, who is facing more than 20 fraud counts, to be stopped when Gomani's defense case was already being heard after his application for discharge flopped. In a surprise turn of events, Prosecutor Sheila Mpindu asked for the matter to be stopped for three weeks, saying she had allegedly received a communique from her boss. But trial magistrate Nemadire felt that this was unheard of before he ordered Hodzi should come and explain his controversial decision. On his part, Wadze told the court that there was breakdown of communication with his subordinate. The PG, however, requested that the case be heard in the chambers since he was going to disclose classified information. This is not the first time Wadze has been accused of interfering with cases being handled in the courts. In business, President Emma Swaminanga's government, which has been struggling to create employment, as promised in its election campaigns, has revived attempts to resuscitate troubled Midlands-based former steel giant Zisco Steel. Speaking at his first meeting with members of the new Zisco Steel board on Wednesday, Industry Minister Mangaliso Ndlovu said that government was in negotiations with the Chinese firm R&F after the collapse of its SA Africa deal. We might not have the big giant collectively that we had, but we will have uh, collectively what Zisco used to do, if not more than that. Again, when we came in, uh, there was an agreement in place uh, with the company r and a Chinese company. And uh, there are a few housekeeping issues that are being tidied to that effect. And uh, we will be meeting them, I think, in the next two weeks. Uh, there are issues that, as government, we felt needed to be um, agreed to even though there was an agreement in place and that's the process which together with the incoming board we will have to see through. At its height, Zisco still employed some 5,000 people and supplied steel and iron across Africa. However, an economic crisis early 2000s reduced its employees to a poultry 200 as it struggled to pay off a $340 million debt to its suppliers. I joined Diaspora Funeral Police when my father passed away. Without them, I don't know where I could have started with all the things I covered for the, for the funeral. For me, to be honest, Diaspora Cash Plan, it was very easy, good transaction. It was only a matter of phone call. Then they said they would do everything, the rest. To be honest, by end of the day, I for the segment. We end with sports. Zimbabwe's National 7 rugby team will step up preparations for the 2020 Tokyo Olympic Games qualifiers when it takes part in the Zambia International 7 rugby tournament, which kicks off in Lusaka Friday. The cheaters were this week named a strong squad with a blend of experienced players and some of the country's upcoming stars will be joined at the two-day event by the hosts Zambia, Lesotho, Botswana, Namibia, Malawi, and a host of provincial teams from South Africa. The Zambia International Servants will be another opportunity for the cheaters to test themselves in a competitive tournament as they prepare to defend their Africa Cup Servants crown at this year's continental event to be held in South Africa from November 8 to 9. The cheaters squad features a number of experienced players such as Zambia best captain Stephen Hunduza, Romania best center Nguani Chibue and South African best forwards Wiselele Chamala and Jabulon Lovu. Reporting for NewZimbabwe.com, I am Makanaka Masenya. For this and more stories, visit our website www.newzimbabwe.com and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Newzim TV.